So the 2019 season of movies is coming to a close in the next couple of weeks. We've got a couple big ones left, not a lot, so expect some review on it. Definitely one big one coming up that I'm gonna review, but no, it's been a pretty good, it's, it's been a pretty good year for movies. But on that note too, I think there's been a lot of misses and there's been a lot that hasn't really interested me. I think it's been probably the worst year for superhero movies. We've had one good one, in my opinion. Shazam is the only good superhero movie. And uh, I don't think uh, 2020 looks that much better. So it's gonna be a really interesting year of 2020. So in today's video, we are talking about uh, my most anticipated movies of 2020. Of course, this is kind of a top 10, but they're in no specific order. They're just the 10 movies that I'm the most anticipated to see, the ones I think are going to be really good, and the ones that have piqued my interest and in otherwise fully stacked year of movies. So it was just, you know, I thought I'd just talk about this stuff, bring it up, discuss it, and what you guys think you're excited to see in 2020, or what's been your favorite movie of 2019. I'm definitely going to do my top 10 movies of 2019 after a couple more movies come out because I think there's some that might make my top 10. And no, I'm not talking about The Rise of Skywalker. So let's go over my most anticipated movies of 2020. Uh, to start, we're going to go with one I'm not really like sure how this is going to go. It could go one of two ways. It could be really well done and bring a and bring a prominence back to an otherwise forgotten cinematic universe. Or it could just bomb and no one's going to remember it, which I can see happening too. It is Snake Eyes. Yes, the character from G.I. Joe is getting a spin-off movie, Henry Golding, who is a fantastic actor. I think I've loved him in everything he's done. I can't think of a movie I didn't like him in, even if I didn't really like the movie last Christmas. Now, he was the best part of that, so his Snake Eyes, that could be really interesting. I think Storm Shadow's in this, I can't remember, and I think the Baroness? You're getting some classic G.I. Joe characters in here. I'm a big G.I. Joe guy. The toy line existed before I was really, like, into, you know, like, the collecting side of things, so I never really got into it, and I really want Hasbro to bring it back in a six-inch scale, because I'm a six-inch collector. There's something about this movie that could really work. I could either you know, do all the elements of the original G.I. Joe movies that were good, which were the Snake Eyes bits, and do something completely unique with it. Is he gonna be silent? I don't know, that's the main problem. You got a guy like Henry Golding, he's probably gonna talk, right? So I'm excited to see Snake Eyes. Did you guys know that there is a Barbie movie coming out in 2020 starring Margot Robbie? I didn't know, and I'm so excited for that. That sounds like a great idea. I can't believe that's gonna happen. Like, she'd be perfect for Barbie. That world perfectly works for her. So that, that sounds exciting. Weird that a Barbie thing piques my interest, and what's even weirder is that the two bottoms on my list here are all toy related. That's kind of interesting, so yeah. But toys are fun. Toy movies need to be better. So Barbie is on my list. Weird one, but hey, I can like what I like. You don't have to watch it. No one's gonna watch it, probably. And also on my list is a movie coming from director Edgar Wright. Uh, we don't know a lot about this project. It's called Last Night in Soho. Uh, I mean, this sounds right up his alley. Baby Driver was a phenomenal movie. He's a talented director, talented writer, and a talented editor. He definitely knows how to work a camera and work behind the scenes to make something work. He's a phenomenal filmmaker. And anything he does, I get excited for. So like, this one is right up there for me. I can't wait till we see more about it. I think this could be a really fun, really interesting movie. Last Night in Soho, it's got such like a, a genre noir-esque feel to it. And that's gonna be such an interesting thing to see. And on the same note as a filmmaker making a movie coming out this year, Christopher Nolan's got a new one. Yes, I have some, uh, I have a love-hate love -hate relationship with uh, Christopher Nolan. I really, really like Memento. I really like the Dark Knight trilogy. Yes, all of them. I really didn't like Interstellar, and I thought Dunkirk was just kind of hit or miss, but Tenet is coming out. Uh, this is going to be a really interesting one. I, I haven't seen any of the uh, previews or the trailer. I want to go in this one not knowing anything, because I think that's the best way to experience a Christopher Nolan film. This could either be a breathtaking cinematic marvel, or it could be a just generic, bland sci-fi thing that isn't very inspiring like Inception or like Interstellar. So Tenet, I'm very excited to see the same as uh, Last Night in Soho. <laughs> and going back to the genre filmmaker, the gentleman, you know, Guy Ritchie, who is a talented director, a talented guy who knows what he's doing, has a few misses, which really sucks, but I really love his work. He's got The Gentleman coming out. That cast looks incredible. McConaughey, Hunnam, Hugh Grant in a role that is so un Hugh Grant, that is so appealing, and I cannot believe this is gonna come out soon. This one looks so great. All the trailers have been amazing. This one is just gonna knock my socks off. I'm so excited for this one. Like, I had to put it on this list just because everything I've seen, I've been very intrigued by. It's very formulaic for Guy Ritchie, but when you know your formula well and you know how to work with that, you got something great coming up. 
So that one, The Gentleman, is definitely on my list. And one that might surprise a few people, I have The Invisible Man. Uh, the Universal Monsters, the old school movies, I really like those movies. I think every attempt to reboot them and make them modern, because we had The Wolfman, Dracula Untold, The Mummy, did we have, I thought we had another one. But The Invisible Man, uh, Elizabeth Moss, a great, great actress. And her ex is stalking her and she, he is invisible. Great concept to bring us into the modern time. Lower budget of a Blumhouse production, perfect idea. This one intrigues me a lot. I'm excited to see where this one goes. So I had to put it on here. I'm not a big horror guy. I do like the Universal Monsters though, so I just had to throw this one on here. Invisible Man, that one sounds great. And I got a couple animated movies on here because I am a fan of animation. I, I respect the art and the genre a lot. The first one is Onward. And it's the big P Pixar sweeping epic. Uh, it seems like a very well thought out story of these two brothers who are trying to see their dad one last time. Uh, the one brother played by Tom Hall never met him, so I, this one looks very emotional, very interesting. Every time I see the trailer, I'm just impressed by what's happening in there. Great voice cast, Chris Pratt has a great voice there. Tom Holland too. Julia Louise Dreyfus, that one's very good. I'm like, this seems like a great idea for an animated movie, and Pixar knows how to knock these kind of stuff out of the park, so I'm excited for that one. But you know what I'm more excited for? As a guy who loves Hanna-Barbera, that whole era of cartoons, I, I just love everything about it. We got a new Scooby-Doo animated movie coming out called Scoob. All right, great voice cast, the animation looks great, but here's what's exciting me. We know Blue Falcon's gonna be in this, we know Dynamut's gonna be in this, we know Dick Dastardly's gonna be in this, you know, we got all these classic Hanna-Barbera cartoons. We're setting up a universe in this movie of Hanna-Barbera cartoons. I'm so excited, like this is great, give me some Yogi Bear, give me some Snagglepuss, give me some Jetsons, give me all that, we've got to get this one going, I hope this one makes so much money, I'm going to be talking in depth about this when it comes out because it's so great and so amazing, like Scoob is such a great character and a great launching off point, like you want to get one that a lot of people know, you get Scooby Doo, then you go off that and make a lot of that, I think the voice casting's good, some people are kind of up and down about how the way Scooby talks. I think it works. It's a movie that's got to appeal to a lot of people. So you know what? It's okay how he sounds. It's okay how he talks. And I think Will Forte is an okay Shaggy. I'm not 100% sold yet, but I don't have to be, right? Like, we got time to learn. We got time to grow. And of course, there is one superhero movie I'm actually excited to see, and that is Wonder Woman 1984. Love the first Wonder Woman. Love that the cast is returning to this with Gal Gadot and Chris Pine. Chris Pine, underrated as Steve Trevor. The best Chris in Hollywood. You can fight me on that any day of the week. The best Chris in Hollywood. 84, great time period. It's, it looks so vibrant and fun. The trailer just came out. Kristen Wiig's kind of selling me on Cheetah. I'm still not convinced, but I'm getting closer there. Pedro Pascal's Maxwell Lord, thumbs up. Yeah, it's what you're doing. You know what you're doing with this guy, a sleazy, infomercial kind of guy who's trying to sell his mall, perfect, has a magical thing that can grant wishes, perfect, that's what you're doing, you know what you're doing, this is perfect, are we gonna kill Steve Trevor again? Not perfect, leave him alive, see what happens, maybe he's old, but no, Wonder Woman 1984, this one looks great, I am very excited for this, and the, the colors are so great, and vibrant, and just amazing to watch, I cannot wait for this one to come out. And of course, there is another movie that is coming out, and it is a sequel to a great set of movies that came out back in the early 90s and I, was it 89 did the first one come out in 89 i can't remember bill and ted face the music this whole concept is straight up my alley for things i like i love keanu reeves alex winters alex winters love him too they're a great combination they know what they're doing uh, this looks fun they, they were destined to save the world they didn't so how's uh you know the mundane life working for them we're gonna find out and i cannot wait to find that out this one sounds incredible you know exactly where to go with this. I can't wait to see it. Like that that's this as a Bill and Ted fan, this is what I wanted. This is what I cannot wait to see. And those are my 10 films I most anticipated for 2020. As always, you can like the video and subscribe to the channel as we got more content coming your way. I would love to hear what you're excited for in 2020 or what movie was your favorite of 2019, right? There's a lot of good movies, but we all know it wasn't Joker.